So good afternoon, my name is OT and welcome to SteadyBro. Today we will be looking at the regulation of glycolysis within the liver. In the previous video, we looked at the regulation of glycolysis within the muscle. So we shall consider hexokinase, phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase. See how these differ in terms of their regulation within the liver. Let's look at phosphofructokinase first. Phosphofructokinase, similarly to what happens within the muscle tissue, is allosterically by ATP. This happens when the energy charge within the cytoplasm is high, when there's an abundance of ATP. Once again, allosteric inhibition means the um, ATP molecule is not binding phosphofructokinase at the same site where its natural substrate, fractose 6-phosphate normally binds. It binds it allosterically. On binding this allosteric site, it causes a conformational change, which makes it lose its affinity for fractose 6-phosphate and hence inhibiting and impeding the flow of glycolysis. One difference between the regulation of glycolysis within the muscle and in the liver is that concerning phosphofructokinase, differently from the muscle, it is not inhibited by a fall in pH because lactic acid is not normally produced within the liver. In the muscle, when there's an increase in lactic acid, this fall in pH normally potentiated the inhibitory activity of ATP, further interrupting the flow of glycolysis. Within the liver, however, this does not occur. In the liver, high levels of citrate inhibit phosphofructokinase and potentiates the activity of ATP. This is because as glycolysis progresses, there are byproducts produced which feed into other metabolic pathways, right? So when citrate levels are high, it signals to the cell that there are abundant metabolic precursors and hence there is no need for it to keep breaking down glucose. Citrate plays a major role in the Krebs cycle, the TCA, which produces more ATP. When there is a high glucose level within the cell, this results in a high level of fructose 6-phosphate. This is because glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate, which is further isomerized to fructose 6-phosphate. In the liver, when the levels of fructose 6-phosphate is high, this results in an intermediate product called fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. So fructose 2,6-bisphosphate then binds phosphofructokinase. On binding phosphofructokinase, it increases its affinity for fructose 6-phosphate. The increased affinity of phosphofructokinase for fructose 6-phosphate results in it being converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So basically, glucose high, fructose 6-phosphate high. Fructose 6-phosphate high, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate high. Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate high binds phosphofructokinase, increases its affinity. Increased affinity means more fructose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, which promotes glycolysis. The regulation of glycolysis via hexokinase within the liver is similar to that which occurs within the muscle. This means when there is an abundance of glucose 6-phosphates, this acts as a negative feedback loop and inhibits the activity of hexokinase, therefore preventing the conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphates, inhibiting the flow of glycolysis. However, differently from the muscle, within the liver, there is an isozyme, basically a brother from another mother of our dear friend hexokinase called glucokinase. And glucokinase has a lower affinity for glucose than hexokinase. Therefore, for glucokinase to get any action, there must be a very high concentration of glucose within the system. When this occurs, glucokinase converts glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, which is then used and make glycogen and uh, fatty acids. Additionally, when there is high uh, levels of glucose within the bloodstream, glucokinase is also present within the pancreas, and particularly within the beta cells. Beta cells are cells within the pancreas that produce insulin. So when glucokinase within the pancreas converts glucose to glucose 6-phosphate and insulin is produced by the beta cells, this causes a rush of glucose within the cells. Lastly, let's look at pyruvate kinase. Pyruvate kinase in the liver 
like within the muscle, is also allosterically inhibited when there is an increase in ATP. However, the pyruvate kinase present in the liver is different from the pyruvate kinase present in the muscle. This is because they are isozymes, aka brothers from another mother. When there is a low sugar level within the system, glucagon is produced to promote catabolic activity and increase the blood sugar level. When this is the case, different signaling pathways are set in motion. One of these is the cyclic AMP cascade. What it ultimately culminates in is that pyruvate kinase within the liver is phosphorylated and when this occurs, it diminishes, it reduces its affinity to convert phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate, thereby inhibiting glycolysis. So this concludes the regulation of glycolysis. I hope these videos were useful and you were able to learn something from it. If there is something you'd like me to improve upon, please let me know. If there is something I'm not quite explaining clearly, please let me know and I would greatly appreciate it and I'll work on that to make things better. Thank you very much. I'm OT and salute!